Hello, I'm Sula. This video is a companion video to the last video in my series on dark sky sites for stargazing. All of these videos are collected in a playlist that I made of dark sky places, which so far only includes some places that I've visited in the United States, although recently I included Botswana, but I hope to expand to other countries eventually, someday. In the last video, I covered a dark sky place called Laguna Mountain Recreation Area in Central California. And in this video, I want to cover a dark sky place a little past Laguna Mountain called Clear Creek Management Area. I did not include Clear Creek with Laguna Mountain because it has some special considerations. In this episode, I'm exploring a new place, well, new to me anyway, to stargaze in Northern California. I'm at the Clear Creek Management Area. You have to have a permit to come here to camp, and you can also look for semi-precious stones here, and you need a permit for that. So you need two permits if you want to look for the stones and one permit to camp here, but there is another campsite before you get to Clear Creek where you can camp and you don't need a permit. And it's called Sweetwater. It looked okay. This one looked a little more open than I have a permit for here. And I'm the only person here. And so, so far it looks pretty good. I don't know how dark it is here. It was pretty rural driving out here. You drive past Pinnacles National Park. I couldn't even get a campsite there. It was full on a Monday because it gets very crowded spring break and all of April when the weather is really nice in Pinnacles. And also I was tired of that ranger harassing me at Pinnacles. So I'm gonna check out Clear Creek Management Area tonight when it gets dark. I'll take an SQM and see how dark it is here. It's at least Bortle 3, but maybe even better. We'll find out. I'll be back this evening. Clear Creek Management Area is administered by the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM. It's a part of the United States Department of the Interior. It encompasses 75,000 acres of rugged terrain nestled in the Diablo Range of mountains in California. It ranges from 1,800 feet to over 5,000 feet at San Benito Mountain. The climate is typical of California's Mediterranean climate hot, dry summers, and cold, wet, but short winters, with occasional snow at the summit of San Benito Mountain. It's located on Clear Creek Road near Coalinga, California. From San Jose, California, you take Highway 101 South and turn on Highway 25 to Hollister, and from Hollister, you drive 35 miles, passing Pinnacles National Park along the way, and then you turn left on Coalinga Road for 14 miles, passing Laguna Mountain, and then you turn left at a BLM sign for Clear Creek, which is an unpaved road called Clear Creek Road, until you come to two official campgrounds, Oak Hill and Jade Mill. They're both very small campgrounds with a very limited number of campsites, each has a fire pit, a picnic table, and a shade structure, and they have clean bathrooms with toilet paper. But you must obtain a permit in advance from the BLM to drive on Clear Creek Road or to camp at those two campgrounds. The permit is $5 and it's good for seven days. After Jade Mill Campground, there's a locked gate beyond which is the serpentine area of critical environmental concern. ACEC. To enter the ACEC area, you must request a free permit in advance to access the Serpentine ACEC area for the duration of one day. And you can only get five permits in one calendar year. The Clear Creek area is one of the most highly mineralized areas in California with over 150 semi-precious minerals and gemstones including serpentine, jadeite, cinnabar, trimolite, 
topazite, neptunite, and the extremely rare California State Gem, Benitoite. Hobby gem and mineral collectors are drawn to Clear Creek in search of these stones. Other recreational opportunities there are stargazing, hunting, target shooting, camping, mineral collecting, mountain biking, horseback riding, hiking, and off-highway vehicle riding. The area beyond the lock gate has hundreds of miles of OHV off-highway vehicle trails, including the Condor Mountain OHV area, very popular area. And running through the area is the beautiful and very clear Clear Creek. Well, I found out it apparently only runs in the springtime and dries up by midsummer. It's a very remote area with very dark skies. They're rated at Bortle 2, but I took an SQM and it was 21.6. Although the campgrounds are small and have few sites, you are allowed to camp anywhere in the BLM area except where explicitly prohibited, which includes the ACEC area, although to me it appeared many people had camped there in the past. There are a lot of dispersed camping sites near the Jade Mill campground though. When I visited Clear Creek Management Area, the stargazing was sublime and there was hardly anyone there and it was very relaxing and serene. It's so cute. <laughs> I'm looking at an open cluster in Camelo Partilis, NGC 1502. It's so cute. <laughs> it has a double star at the center. Very nice. I hiked up Goat Mountain during the day and I walked in the ACEC area looking for stones since I'm somewhat of a rock hound. <laughs> and I stargazed and I camped at night and I had a ball. I've had an amazing two nights of stargazing here at Clear Creek Management Area, in Northern California, Bureau of Land Management Lands. The campground was very nice. The bathroom was nice and clean and there was hardly anybody here, just those people over there who were quiet as mice. They didn't have any obnoxious LED lights pointing at the sky. They were the perfect neighbors to have at a campground. And I have a clear view of the sky. It was pretty warm. So what's the catch? Well, the catch is that like most Bortle 1 or Bortle 2 sites, it's very remote and there's no electricity, there's no cellular service, and there's no water and no trash pickup. So you must bring your own water and you must pack out all your trash. Okay. That would be most Bortle 1 or Bortle 2 sites. What else? Well, what else is that there is naturally occurring asbestos in the Clear Creek area, and you must take precautions. You cannot drink from Clear Creek unless you have a filter that's capable of fil filtering out asbestos fibers, which can kill you. And you're advised to keep your windows up when driving on Clear Creek Road and to recycle your car's air. And because it is a very large OHV area, there are many people riding ATVs and dirt bikes and they're kicking up dust and you have to take precautions not to breathe it in. Which leads to the question, why would the United States government make this an OHV area when it's known to contain naturally occurring asbestos, which can kill you if you breathe it in and it lodges in your lungs. And when asbestos is harmless, unless it's disturbed, I don't know. I'm not in charge. I don't make the rules. Cinnabar, the ore for mercury, was discovered in Clear Creek area in 1852 during the California gold rush. And since mercury binds to gold, it was used by prospectors to collect small amounts of gold. So there are abandoned mercury mines there as well. When asbestos was found in the Clear Creek area, it was mined in huge open pits into the 1970s. When asbestos was found to cause cancer, it was banned in California in 1977. The mines were abandoned. The Atlas Asbestos Company began mining asbestos in this area in 1963 
and since it contained one of the largest deposits of asbestos in the world. But when asbestos was banned, Atlas Asbestos Company closed the mine and they left behind a toxic waste field that is now a Superfund site. And if you don't know what a Superfund site is, these are large contaminated and hazardous areas identified by the United States Congress by the CERCLA Act of 1980, whereby Congress allocated money for cleanup of these large hazardous sites. So in other words, anytime you hear someone refer to a place in the United States as a Superfund site, you should stay away. It's toxic and it's hazardous, and usually they're very large. So why is the government making a large OHV area around a Superfund site? I don't know. All I know is this area has very clear dark skies, and it's an ideal area for stargazing. But stay away on the weekends when dirt bike riders and ATV riders are sure to be kicking up a lot of asbestos dust and don't drink the water if there is any from Clear Creek or don't try to bathe in it. I would highly recommend that you not go on the weekends if at all possible. So it's a beautiful area with pristine dark skies, ideal for stargazing or astrophotography. If you take the necessary precautions, I still recommend it. That's it for this episode of Stargazing Sights. I'll see y'all soon. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.